Our minimum was 83.6. Hi there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. You might be asking yourself, Michael, why you got the banana pulled up here? What could you possibly have left to do to it? You've got everything done on it. Well, I put these on, robbed them off another boat. This PVC pipe, it's really scarred up, been scraped up. Looks like it's been drugged down sideways on the highway, to be honest with you. I bought me a couple of new pieces of PVC pipe, but that's not what we're here for today. We are going to do this. But have you ever bought a decibel gun, a DB gun? You know, it, it checks the level of sound things make. Now, last time I was out in this boat, running it hard, wide open, when I powered it down, you know, this motor's got a high pitch, you know, pretty loud. And that's okay, because that's what it's gonna do. But is there a way to tame that sound? And I think I might have a solution for you, and we're gonna check it. I'm gonna put the outboard, part of it the prop of it in a in a big container of water so i can you know decrease the gurgling sound or the sound of the just a straight exhaust out the out the bottom of the prop muffle that somewhat so i can get a true difference in sound at the head and i'm going to show you what i'm going to do to get that i'm hoping this works this is an experiment but i bought this little gun a db gun whatever you want to call it off eBay for like 30 bucks. And I thought, cool, I'm gonna see if this sound deadening stuff I purchased works. And let's see how much of an impact it has on the engine compartments of my bigger boats. But what can it do for a little 34, 35 horse outboard? We're gonna learn and find out today. Let's go ahead and get this cover peeled back and start prepping this thing for a test. Now, the funny thing is, my son and I were just talking about this while we are out on the other boat this weekend. And I thought, well, I can use my test tank, but I'd have to cut the barrel down. And then, lo and behold, I forgot I had a barrel that was already cut down. So, guess what? That'll be deep enough for it to pick up water and muffle it, I believe. So let's go ahead and fill it up. All righty, while that's filling up, I got to put the battery back in the boat that I've been using on, uh, in the old Larson test. This battery must be just plumb full of electricity. Otherwise, how can it weigh so much? Now my thoughts here is I'm gonna do a test, a DB test with the cover off. We'll do that first. And then we'll do another DB test with the cover on and I'll put it, hold it to the front of the engine and hold it to the side of the engine just to kind of get a comparison between the two around the cover. And this will measure the highest point as I hold it around here. And then we'll insulate. I've got some insulation that I purchased and a lot of your older outboards did have insulation in here. You can see remnants of it, of what used to be in here. And uh, we'll have to clean that up and get that prepped so that our stuff will stick in there like we want it to. We'll let this get on filled up here. We can go ahead and hook our fuel line up. Now it's so hot out today, I don't think I'm gonna use the choke. Let's see if she'll pop off. This thing doesn't require a whole lot of choke typically. Here again, I'm not gonna be able to test this at high RPMs, but what I will do is when I get out Next time I have it out on the lake, what the heck is that? Oh. Next time I have it out on the lake, we'll actually do some speeds at, at high RPM. I'm also gonna do a similar test like this in my inboard outboard, uh, whether I do it on the one under the cover or if I do it on my StarCraft, but I'd really like the engine compartment there to be a little quieter, which would be nice. Um, I could actually, you know, tame it down a little bit because it's not crazy loud, but it's not quite as quiet as the old Mercruiser 165 is under its hood. And it doesn't have any insulation under it either yet. Did I say Mercruiser 165? I did. Uh, you'll probably see that video 
this coming weekend. Stay tuned. That's right, I gotta pick up two more screws, four more screws like these. I was just at the store today too and I could have got some more to finish mounting these down. I mean, they're solid with two, but they're really solid with four. Got about five more inches of water and we'll be ready to rock. I wanna get this test started and completed before the cicadas kick in. It's pretty quiet out right now. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Now I just had a vehicle go by and it went from 50 up to like 65. Just me talking at a normal tone. Okay, what I call normal. We're hitting about 70, we can hit as high as 83 dBs here. So now I can go ahead and hit min. The max I hit was 83.4. The min was 50.1. That's when everything, no cars are going by, dead silence. So that kind of gives you an idea between what the difference is between 50 and 80. My son was explaining it to me the other day because he's good at explaining some things to his old man that I don't quite all understand or not haven't done that much research on. But the decibel range, the dB scale is weird because 50 is just almost like a dead silent room, but you know, 140 can be deafening. So, all right, all right, the water is full. Let's go ahead and start this up. Right now, I'm gonna turn this on. About 45 to 50 right now. It went up to 70. We'll let this warm up. About 92. All right, our max like it says, is 96.4. Our minimum was 83.6. So, now let's do it with the cover on. Okay, cover on, we'll fire it up again. Definitely a lot quieter with the cover on. Now 
Now hitting around 86. All right. Let's go put some insulation in this hood. Okay, one of the first things I gotta do is clean up the old sticky stuff that's in here. That's got the old, uh, you know, the old foam, the insulation that used to be there. We need to clean that out first. Now what I've got is one of these green, coarse scotch bright pads. Looks like that's working pretty good. I think that with a little bit of simple green mixed with it, We'll clean this up real nice. Oh yeah. It's taking the old foam right out that's left there. I'll tell you what folks, if you haven't gotten one of these moving blankets from Harbor Freight and just keep it in your tool arsenal, it's one of the most useful tools I have. Like right now, I'm using it for this so I don't scratch my paint up. 101 uses for a gra gasket scraper. So now I'm gonna take some towels and wipe it dry. Now to make sure there's no residue left that's gonna cause me any issues for my sticky back pad to stick, I'm gonna hose this out with brake cleaner outside That'll remove any oils and residues that's left, plus it'll dry it out, because I'll air, air dry it with my air hose, and we'll be ready to go right after it with the sticky stuff. Now we'll take the air hose and blast it dry, so cover your ears. All right, we got a, little, a few little disclaimers here. Heat sound insulation mats, what it's called. Safety tips, do not, not to be applied directly to a heat source, uh, including exhaust pipes, mufflers, and hot turb or hot turbo pipes, and fire source. Uh, it says installation notices, please clean the surface you want to paste, make insulation materials and sheet metal firm fit, and play, and play best adhesive. Dampening performance. That's how I'm just reading it out. It's hard to read. Do not cover the chassis wiring or air holes when you installation. Appropriate use of adhesive tape will strengthen the connection's effect. All right. Let's just see how sticky this stuff is. This foil backing seems pretty, pretty tough. Let's gotta get some laid out here so I can Maybe start cutting on it. If I wanted to wrap it around internally about to there, let's just cut it there and let's start there. Now I'm just going to use my raggedy old scissors. Maybe my utility knife would work better. Scissors weren't bad, it cuts. Yeah, scissors is probably better. Now, so far, I've got to say, I'm I'm pretty pleased with how it's just laying down in there. Now, I may have to trim more out than I'm currently trimming out, but I'll have to do a quick test fit. All right, I just did a quick test fit. Looks like the fuel pump needs a little clearance right here, so we're going to give it that. Well, I'm no professional, but it looks like I could cook a baked potato inside that right now. <laughs> I think we're ready to go take another test fit. See if I got to trim some out. We'll bring my knife along for the ride. Well, let's fire it up.
Well, about 85. Runs about 80 to 83 up here next to the motor. I pull it back about two feet. She's about 76. somewhere in that range. Quite frankly, what's interesting is this is 83, sitting here idling, and I'm further away from the motor than from the pickup than this is, and just me talking takes it up to 86 to 89. So I think that's respectably quiet enough. You could have a conversation over it right now. that's definitively any quieter but I don't know looks like everything fits pretty good we're gonna go with it well let's see what we learned here today folks we learned that without a hood and with the hood two different noise decibels with insulation under the hood, the noise decibel level may be a slight bit less, but not by a lot. But it's weird now, I can hear other noises from this engine that I didn't hear before. And it's like, is that a concerning noise now? Because I can hear it over the other noise or not? What's coming out from here is, is actually pretty quiet overall. Uh, that's not bad. I mean, your, your 80 decibel range is like normal conversation between two human beings. So is that ridiculous or not? Now it did go up to 91 when I revved it up there a little bit. Um, I'll be curious to check it once I get it on the water. We'll have to do that one of these days just to see what it'll actually do for noise on the water. Oh well, that was fun. Did we learn something? Sure, a little something here and there. Uh, that engine is going to be quieter for me just by a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead right now and put these other two guide poles, new guide poles on with some caps on them. And, uh, cause I like having these on the back of the boat, on the back of the trailer. It really makes it in a crosswind or if you're in a river situation, it really makes it nice to load your boat and know that it's centered up on the trailer whenever you pull it up on there. And you, it's nothing worse than pulling out of the water and your boat be a little crooked on the trailer. And it's like, and then you don't, have the patience to back it in and straighten it out and you drag it home and people following you go wow what a what a dolt 
Uh, he doesn't know how to put his boat on his trailer straight. Give yourself a fighting chance. Let's put these on now. I can hear the cicadas kicking into high gear. Oh. I think we're gonna have to use a tape measure just so I don't screw it up too bad. Let's see here. Let's just mark it out the same as this one. One inch and about five and a quarter. I'm just gonna put a hole through one side and then I'll set it on there and try to line it up with the other. All right, folks, there you have it. And this concludes another episode. We did the sound deadening. I've got my new poles. They're taller. These are five foot tall pieces of PVC pipe. That stuff used to be pretty reasonable. Now at the big box store, it's about $15 for five feet of it. That's about $3 a foot. That's some expensive plastic, but dang, gotta have it. Well, all the links to all the things in this video, including the DB meter, will be in the description below. Don't be afraid to arrow down and take a look at some of that stuff. If you follow those links to the items and make your purchase, especially if it's Amazon, nobody else but Amazon at this point, uh, I'll get a little commission for anything you buy on Amazon from following that link. Helps out the channel and affords me to be able to keep doing and bringing content to you folks out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I hope you, hope you had fun with me. I had fun and uh, learned a little few something here and there. And we'll see you on the next video. Enjoy the drone footage on an up and coming mystery boat. When I pulled this boat up here, you might have saw the boat in cloaked in white tarp. Yeah, tarp. I've ordered a boat, official boat cover for it, so it won't have to be tarp. Because one thing bad about tarps, tarps are fine, but they're temporary. And they don't last as long as boat covers last. Plus, they don't breathe. And when they don't breathe, what happens when it doesn't breathe? Mildew. So you want to keep the mildew monster away. Oh, well, let's put this back into safe hiding. And then we're going to take it out next weekend and see if all those adjustments I made on the motor a few days ago that the video is not out on yet. Uh, cause I want to take it to the water and test that, uh, make sure everything worked like it should. And I've got it adjusted like it should. And hopefully I don't blow it up, but, uh, cause I like to get out in the water and just hold or pegged, pin it, give her the onions. And this one here does about 27 top speed, uh, the way I have it trimmed out and everything right now, but all right. Guys, see you on the next video. Gals, I haven't forgot about you. See you on the next video as well.